Now, Connie, I, I'm a foster dad. I, yes. I, we, but an Terry, adoption. An adopted, mm -hmm. yeah, adoptive dad. I, we've, uh, Terry and I have had 12 foster kids. We've adopted three. These folks have 38 foster kids yeah, in their background. Yeah, that was a year ago also that we taped that. So they've had about 16 more, I think. Wow. They have four right now, teenage boys, in and addition to the six that they've adopted. They've adopted six on top of that. Yes. And they seem happy, healthy. Yes, they couldn't have any children. I mean, foster parents come to us for all different kinds of reasons. This one, they couldn't have children on their own. So this is what they wanted to do. This is what God called them to do and to be. It's amazing. So Alberto and Christine Rodriguez, we're going to continue their story now. And what they're going to talk about in this clip is a little of the mechanics of how this works. Because, mm -hmm. again, I want our viewers at home to really peel back the fear that would be associated with foster parenting right. and, and really understand how this works. And they don't have to take six. That's also a fear. You can just take one. <laughs> All, right. All right. Let's take a look at Albert, Alberto and Christine as they continue this conversation. They're amazing. Well, I think, you know, for us, everyone's situation is different. Everyone's story is different. But for us, we wanted a family. We wanted a large family. And um, we, wanted to, we wanted to be normal people. We wanted to do everything the traditional way, you know. And, um, and yet, we kept feeling this, that God had something different for us. And um, um, so for us, our, our first kids that we adopted, we got as siblings. They were seven, eight, and nine years old. And they were, um, it was pretty wild. They were pretty wild. But... Um, they were permanent, and we, we had to make a commitment to keep them as foster kids until they were 18. And we were told that we wouldn't survive more than three months. Yeah, we had social workers, you know, not Valley Teen Ranch, but county workers. You, you know, you won't make it with these kids. You just won't. But we did. Because and, of their track record. Yeah, because of their behaviors. But um, we did, and we, they, we just had such a love for them. And even though they weren't biological, it didn't matter. We, we had a love for them, and um, we did end up adopting them, and they're now... Um, 20, 19, and 18. Um, the 18 year old still is at home. Our 19 year old's in the army, and our 20 year old came back to live with us for a little bit. She's going to go back on her own. But then on top of that, a blessing was um, the Lord has let us adopt three babies that we got basically out of the hospital. So um, we've also had the opportunity. They told us that would not happen. It just, it's not possible. You just hardly ever get babies that you get to adopt. And um, yet, We've had three that we've taken out of the hospital and kept and adopted. So that's been a real blessing. And how many do we adopt in one day? <laughs> we like adopted, well, four in one day. Yeah. Fresno County said they didn't know if anyone had ever adopted four in one day. They weren't sure. <laughs> and they certainly thought we might have topped the record of six out of Fresno County. We couldn't have done it without Valley Teen Ranch. They were the vehicle. You know, they're the ones that call us up and say, hey, I got this child, you know, I think it's a fit for your home. What do you think? Do you think you can do this? And the support that they give us, yeah. just the fact that they, they call us on a consistent basis. They, they let us know they're, they're praying for us. They, they're aware of what's going on in our house. And they um, have been a big, big uh, source of strength for us. It's through them that we've gotten all of the kids that we've gotten. And um, they don't just, for us, they don't just place a kid. Oh, here's a kid, you know, um, you, you got an opening, take this kid. They really do look at the behaviors, what we can handle as a couple, if they don't think we can handle it. Like maybe maybe our house right now, we have some real rowdy kids and you put another rowdy one in the mix, it's not gonna work. So um, they're not just trying to fill a place and you know, just get another placement, but um, they're, they're looking at our structure, the way our family's going. And on top of that, um, you know, they're there for us. Anytime we call the weekends, you know, something happens on the weekend, they're there for us. There's always a contact. Um, and then they're there once a week, you know, to support us. And it's not adversarial. Some people tell me that their uh, relationship with their social workers become very adversarial. And they're suspicious of them. And we haven't had that. It's been more of a support. Definitely. I think Connie's been one of the uh, better coaches I've seen. And then the way she uh, distributes her uh, social workers, the people that work underneath her, well, they come out and they actually become uh, friends. You know, in the long run, they become friends. And uh, yeah. we're able to uh, share where we're struggling and be open. And, and uh, likewise, they, they take off their mask and they just show us who they are. And it, it just uh, it enables us to be a, a lot more free with the children and, and uh, to be open with the children that, you know what, you're welcome here. You don't have to be worried about 
being evicted from here. You know, this is a different home. Yeah, and I think that because the social workers become our friends and they, they're familiar with our house, they're comfortable when they're placing someone in our home. They're comfortable. They know what this child is getting into because some of these kids have sad, sad stories, and you don't want to place them somewhere where it's going to be a continuation of the sad story. You want to place them somewhere where... You, there's going to be hope here. You know, you're going to find that family you're looking for. You're going to find that place of belonging that maybe you've never had. We've had kids that have said, I've never had home. I've never had parents, you know, and you are those parents to us. And it's great. So it is all about hope. I mean, th these folks adopted four in one day. That has to be a record in Fresno County. It's amazing that the finalization all happened at the same time. It was, you know, kind of coincidental, which we call God incidental. Well, the thing that, that really struck me about their testimonial was the incredible support that they get from you personally, but also from social workers. They talk about social workers as being their friends, that right. there's total 24-7 support around the clock. And we're in their home every single week and available 24-7. And for resources, for support, for encouragement, for fun. I mean, we have foster parent appreciation dinner. We have a date night for our foster parents. We do things all together to try to encourage and and uplift them because they are doing the work in the trenches with well, the kids. Well, it takes a team and a family. Yes. And, and one of the things that I, th I felt like Christine really addressed there was this myth that you can't really love somebody who isn't your biological child as much as you, you do your biological kids. Mm -hmm. And we found that that's untrue. That's Absolutely. untrue. You love them unconditionally, and you see them grow and blossom, and when they fall and scrape their knee, or when they graduate from high school, or they get their driver's license, or in this case, because Alberto and Christine now work at a church, they've become, what's the word, licensed to yes. be able to marry and bury people. They perform the wedding of their oldest foster wow. daughter, and she now has two children, and so they are a whole complete family, including being grandparents. Incredible. Well, what we're going to look at now is, I mean, we, this is Channel 49. Channel 49, the bishop, the diocese, the church of Jesus in the valley is about spiritual transformation. That's, mm -hmm. that's what we're all about. And, yeah. and this show is about transformational leadership. And these are definitely transformational leaders, as are you. Now, what we're going to look at in this segment is the spirituality that comes through Alberto and Christine in a powerful way. Supernaturally natural, that's what we call it. Let's take a look. Mm -hmm. Definitely, just the fact that it, and it's just, the, the basis for this it is Jesus. That's, that's the, the rock and we're, we're building on that. And that's what breaks the cycles that, that have been carnal and been bad habits in these children's life. That the Lord intervenes and He meets their needs in their heart, whether it's abandonment, whether it's been uh, parents have been uh, addictive to drugs, that they see that there's victory over this. You know that that cycle can yeah. end, and they can move on with their life and don't have to carry the baggage and the shame that they've 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 experienced from their biological parents. Yeah, I think. Um there's so many rewards in being foster parents, too. Our 18-year-old ran into our room last night about midnight, ran into our room and said, Mom, Dad, oh, God, it's just so great, and I think that I am so happy that you're my parents. I love you so much, and ran out of our room. You know, we're like, oh, we love you too, son. Good night. You know, but <laughs> there's just so many rewards to doing this, and... and you know, you see biological parents treat their kids so bad. And, you know, people always talk about, you know, blood is thicker than water. It's not. It's not. Spirit is thicker than blood. And that's our opinion, is that we have such a bond with our children that it, it just goes beyond what even normalcy. You know, it's just, it's just a wonderful, wonderful experience. But you have, to, you have to have a couple relationship. You have to be strong in your couple relationship. Um, yeah, we've had many times where they... Yeah. You know, they come in and they try to uh, separate us. And, you know, like any child would, they, they try to uh, bring division or split us apart that we were not as one or as strong. But, uh, well, just like any normal kids. Right. Kids do that. You know, don't tell dad or, you know, mom won't understand. The you know, the and so, you, yeah. yeah, so we have, you have to be ready for that. You know, and, and foster kids have other issues too. They, you know, they have had issues and maybe they have mom issues or maybe they have dad issues, you know, and, and you have to work through that stuff with them. You have to recognize it for what it is and work through it. 